classic techno production tips. Are you ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up, I'm Man Love Kitchen, and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe, hit that notification bell, because whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you won't miss out on anything. Make sure you make it to the end of this video. I'll tell you all about the Patreon and Discord, and I'll tell you who the new patrons are. So, classic techno production tips. What is classic techno? What's techno, anyway? Let me put it this way. Uh, it's been a while since I uh, took my 909 and my SH-101 for a spin, so I thought to just like hook them back up, go back in, jam it out, and talk about my process pretty much. So that's what it's going to be. Um, is it going to be Detroit Techno? No. Is it going to be along the lines of what those techno production, production guys back in the days did? I think so. Let me know what you think on it and let me know if there's anything that you would like to see me do in the future. Um, yeah, I'm ready for it. So if you're ready, let's go head over to the live set and let's go do it. It's going to be a long video today because uh, yeah, I was in the zone. So there's a lot that I uh, wanna show you. So let's go. All right, gang. Okay, so I'm going to make a basic old school techno kind of vibe. I love this flow. So I've got a few of my old school contenders back in the mix, which is like the TR-909 over on this side. The MPC Live is over here. The Octatrack is over here. I've got the Multi Clock back in play because we now have to uh, send out sync to multiple uh, old school devices. So the Multi Clock is an absolute addition for that. Let's get this out of the way. I think it's just off screen a little bit, but I've got like the space echo RE20 here um, and then I've got the Strine Blue Sky over here those are my two effects that I'm using I've got this 802 mixer by Behringer which is here which is a summer for basically the Minitar the Tetra and the subsequent because they're all going through that uh, 802 mixer into the uh, Octotrack right here um, and then uh, everything goes out of the stereo output of the Octotrack and goes 2AL12 uh, zoom mixer over on the far right side. Now, underneath the Minotaur, the Tetra, uh, I've got the uh, AMT8, which is a MIDI patch bay, um, which means that the uh, Akai MPC Live, which as uh, luxuriously has a few outputs already here, sorted, still uh, MIDI outputs that is, still I need um, my MIDI to just like be sorted out like that. So out of the output that goes into the uh, in on the AMT8 and then it sends out eight different MIDI pulses, which is cool, or at least I can just like now um, get to my MIDI um, separately instead of having to daisy chain everything together, which is going to invoke lag. And we don't want MIDI delays. That's not what we want. Now, for the basic groove to start, let's start with a um, arpeggio, which I have started on the SH-101. Now, the, what I like about the SH-101 is that it does a few things very, very neatly and very quickly. Out of an arpeggio, you would like some hypnotism to go. So if I'll start this, you will hear that this immediately, in my mind at least, invokes a bit of suspicion. Now, what I love about this thing is that when it's when the filter is down and the reso is down, see, this is the, your basic tone. The reverb that you're hearing is a space echo as the 802 mixer over on this side has a one uh, aux send, which is handy to get multiple um, sounds through a reverb instead of having to buy more reverbs and just like stick one synthesizer into one reverb. It will clog up the sound considerably. Uh, and what I would want is to have um, control over my reverb. So now it's, it's sending this um, through the reverb. So um, then back to the envelope. The envelope is a bit on the short side. So I've got my ADSR, which is attack, uh, DK sustain release, which is the envelope of the sound, how long it's going to play for. As you can hear how long it's going to release. If I stop it now, it will just like play on forever. As you can hear. So that's what you can do. I'm, I basically set it and forget it. So basically what I've got is like the, uh, I've got the decay up slightly. If you're nitpicky, it's on three uh, out of the 10, the value that's on 10. So that's what it is. So let's play it again. Um, this works 
pretty neatly, um, but sometimes when you're doing it live, it's it can be a bit, um, yeah, um, cumbersome because you have to just press load, play the notes, uh, and you don't want to be fiddling about with playing the notes if you don't know where you are exactly. So that's handy if you use a DJ mix to stick it in one channel, use the pre fader listening and just set up your sound. And then once you're sorted and you feel like uh, you're invincible, you hit play and then you'll just hit like a, um, uh, play on the uh, or fire it off of the multi clock and the multi clock does a few things very very neatly as well on track one it's sending a clock signal now and it can send din sync to a 606 say an 808 drum computer uh, old school machine and it does midi uh, and that's just basically how i use the multi clock so i can as you can hear um yeah get my sort of like sound going i'll just turn down the bass from here now what i will do is i will gradually go into this vibe, yeah? So this is what I want. It's going to be an old school Detroit-esque kind of flow, but as you know me, I'll try to mix stuff up, so. I love the envelope, I really do. So the sub oscillator is not all the way up. As you can hear, this is very sort of like thinny, but. You just gotta love it. So let's just stay here. Put some reso on there. Resonance up a little bit. Envelope it a little bit. Listen to the percussive nature now. So do you understand the power of this machine? With the one sound, I already am playing around and fiddling about with different textures and different things. So can you imagine? So later on, you just place your sub oscillator underneath. Put a little bit of envelope on there. And this is works as you uh, stick it through a uh, delay, of course. All right, so now that I've got this going, I have no clue where I am in the beat. So I'm looking at my uh, Akai uh, MPC Live here. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, nice. get this show on the road shall we now this is the way I would start my setup I would just like look at my crowd look at the floor um, if I'm lucky I sound checked already if I'm unlucky I'm here for the first time getting the hang of the, the room getting the feel for how this performance is going to go so I'm not going to throw all the sounds in immediately I will probably just like get a feel for the flow get a feel for the groove and um, and that's it, yeah? I don't even know where I am in the measure. I've got like an eight bar uh, loop uh, sequence on my um, MPC Live running already because this is going to record the music that I'm going to be playing consecutively with the mini tar, the subsequent and the tetra. And the rest is firing off just sequencing. So let's enter the kick, shall we? feel for it now okay I know where I am in the groove rough up the highest a little bit Something on that. Record it through, yeah. Well, it's going to be okay. Let's do that again. 
make a fast sequence. I think I can do a better job when playing it. Do it again. Two, three, and... if I were um, quantized it actually. into the flow yeah these are my basic chords let's go out and find that minotaur Short. Let's uh, see. We can play that. Go in. Again with the drums. there okay so for now I think yeah I've got the vibe going 
this is going in the right direction. I literally just leave the th the track running because um, I want to just like get to my idea pretty fast. Now I heard a few things that I didn't really like. Uh, for instance, um, this is a thing with the MPC. Now there is the first note that obviously is not playing on the first of the measure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nudge it all the way to where it needs to go, which is all the way over to the front of the sequence so that whenever I play it nice okay so we got that going level wise is something that you will get to obviously in a later sort of like state uh, but for now let's just play that stuff in right okay turn those two off ostinato we're back in our hamster wheel mode the hamster wheel mode is very important because this gives you a bit of a, a breather now what i will do is i will play something with the subsequent which is not going to follow the chord structure which goes like ooh, boo, boo. i'm not gonna go there i'm just gonna stay on this Stay on this note here. Lower that, lower it. I don't like that. Now let's sound design a little bit. Nice, there's already a bit of alpha going on the sound. I'm thinking 
I would like to change something on my um, on my bass line basically because I think that what it's playing right here is nice but I want I want to layer the underlying notes so I will go in and I'll go to my mini guitar I like it but at the same time no not so much okay so let's get out of there let's do this quick fast bear with me I'm getting there yes uh, Rod you are absolutely right you can erase uh, with the erase knob you can erase but then the thing needs to be in stop you need to stop it then press erase and then do it and I prefer to just like um, go on the fly so obviously what I would want to do then is select all the notes and do it that way, basically, you know? Nice, loud. Okay, that's worse. Two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. Save it quick fast. Last note, no! So, we'll go for the last note, which is the wrong note. Say so transpose. gotta like it okay we got it going on yeah and now it will make sense a little bit better with the tetra i think let's end the a tetra back in Ready for the 909? Mm. Yeah, I'm liking this. Lower the filter on the mini tower. Nice. I think that I can also um, transpose the tetra because it's playing a bit on the low side, so I'll, I will leave the low notes where they are, but the top chords that are playing. Bah, 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 bah. I'll transpose the 12. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nice, okay, yeah, we got it going on, nice.
Climax. That's why I love the multi clock. We'll set ourselves up to just like go back in. So I'm turning off everything that's making a noise at the minute. So hats, everything goes back to 0 0.0. I'm in the safe zone. Yes, I am. All right. So and then we enter the 909 back in like so. Like so. That's the thing with the uh, multi-clock, I uh, think I addressed it in videos before. After a while something seems to expand or I think that the housing does something weird so the knobs can get a tad irresponsive. So please keep that in mind if you're doing this big drop and you're thinking yeah I'm gonna drop in the kick. Sometimes it might not happen but then again it's nice in the grand scheme of things. All right, that's basic. Uh, now that I've got a feel for where the track is going, I'm probably going to lower stuff. This knob is crackling, listen. Minitar knob, that's the second knob that's about to go. Anyway, we're in there. Okay, so I've got my drums going. Basic techno style. That's the frequency. I can leave the frequency where it is and just do the same thing um, and make it uh, polymetrically with my envelope. Tune the right where it needs to go. Yeah, that's where the right goes. Turn this off and play the bass line. Yeah, select this one. Edit in. Nice one. 
And that's how you just added the sound into what you want to go. Here's another one that doesn't overlap. It needs to overlap. This one goes slower. Come. So it glides. The first note is still not gliding. Let's get in there. Ah, uh, but that's the end, obviously. Yeah. On the sequence note, it cuts it off here. Bum. Are we there? Yeah, we're there. Okay, now. I'll take out the rim shot and enter the snare drum back in. Kick out. Here we go. Lengthen the notes on the tetra. Okay, shorten the notes on the kick. On, snare, kick in. Take out the bass. Take out the crush. I came with the kick. Shorten the nose. By this time, it's just cool to just focus on how the sound is going to work out for you. Now you got options. And this is basically how I get used to a room. This is after this jam, I'm like, okay, I know exactly what the sound is doing. I know where to place my sounds. It starts to even itself out a little bit. I know my bass line does what it does. I can play a solo on the subsequent. I've got my um, nice tetra chords that are uh, hypnotizing. And I play around with two things on there. I play around with the length. So now it's very short as you can hear. Because everything is in the in the, the oozy kind of rolling vibe of the 909. That's where I want to go. Together with the arpeggio, of course. Kick out. A little bit of portamento going on. Have it slew a little bit. Not too much. Everything off over here. Hats off, clap off, turn off. 
and so now we have a kick drum. Never hit the glide button, ladies and gentlemen. Because it's gonna take like forever for your note to reach its full height. Alright, take this one out now. The tetra. And I don't feel about with the kick drum too much. I mean obviously there's a lot of stuff that you can do with the kick drum as well. Take this one, listen. territory I would say, which also works, head, nice, let's see if we can come up with a different sort of like, uh, maybe, yeah I got a little bit more of that, um, And gradually everything smooth, nice and cool, calm and collected. I love it when it starts to become a little bit more percussive. And the thing is, you know, think in pairs. When you work your hats, uh, the length of the hats, the length of the arpeggio should do the same because, I mean, those two basically live in the same street as you can hear in terms of how they appear. Don't focus on the open hat, focus on the closed hat a bit and listen. filter. All of a sudden it's a drum sound now. If you put some resonance on there, listen to this. Listen to the envelope. It's just a helicopter man. And this is cool if this stuff just enters the club. I mean you need to know this sound to understand that it's going to be a sequence or an arpeggio, but this is just cool. So that's the versatility of the SH-101. If I didn't show it to you today, I don't know what I can tell you. What says you? How do you do? You liked it? This is the flow. This is my kind of flow. I'm, I'm constantly thinking, do I need to take more old school gear to the stage? Uh, I like this hybrid setup because at some point it's like, you can condense it down to it being very small but at the same time you can just like add stuff to it i don't want to be set in a certain production sort of like flow which is uh, yeah almost a dull uh, approach you know just like like sad and forget it kind of vibe that's not what i want but at the same time you know i'm still contemplating what am i bringing um there's one synth coming soon so i'm hopeful hopefully i'm going to just add that into the equation <laughs> i got more room on my uh, on my riser right here uh, but we'll, f we'll figure something out now i hope that this was very entertaining for you so i don't want to digress i like to say dj adam and furniture welcome to patreon and lemmy and slim pickens welcome to the channel i mean there's two ways of supporting me there's more ways of supporting obviously patreon being one and with patreon we actually get to hang out in discord which is like a bridged uh, app that just runs uh consecutively which is really cool so after this video we'll all be in the chat and we'll talking about synthesizer stuff about uh gas you know everybody's got gear acquisition syndrome about me trying to just come up with a new um 
<laughs> setup but i'm just adding more stuff to the equation still as we go um and the channel memberships this is something that you can do with that's that's a different kind of vibe because i've got different tiers on the different things so on with patreon there's actually um uh, a tier where i can make music with you if you would want that if you want to get more in touch with me and ask me questions that's also possible but to just get in touch and make music and that's what one of my patrons did actually You're talking about compass and he sent over some really 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 cool tracks like the excerpts of what he did with his modular and i was like okay that's something that i would never ever uh, you know that's just not my flow it was that amazing I, I love modular i'm not so into it that i um, mean and he is and he made some really really cool uh, tracks so we're making that into a track not only that um, the label manager for DJ Pierre's uh, label uh, future asset and for uh, one love recordings which is um, the late um, uh, Paul Johnson's label have shown an interest in in those tracks so we're making music with me as an kitchen would actually mean that we we're actually going to release it either on my labels I've got three of them but it's also cool to just like hey, get some cool remixes going so that is absolutely amazing what else am I doing on patreon I'm building a mixer so we're in the process of trying to just like come if we're gonna get parts I mean the world's slowly opening up again so hopefully um, the technology market will be not as strained as, as it was for the last year uh, so trying to get parts trying to just like make a mixer catered to the dullest artist yeah to the dullest artist which means a few things like wouldn't you like to have some clock options wouldn't you like to have um, mono stereo switching would you like to just like have inserts and that kind of vibe but just all in a small form factor mixer because there's a clock mixer on one side that DJs use and then there's a stereo mixer or a studio mixer that, that, that produces use what's there in the middle nothing so I thought to just like close that gap and I'm working on it with designers which is absolutely cool um yeah the music is on Bandcamp I'm working on an album so the music I'm doing now is not gonna be on Bandcamp as of yet but it's just a cool thing um, I'm just in a, I'm, I'm in the zone at the moment I'm really really happy I'm happy with you guys supporting the channel because come on man I never in my life thought to just like hit a 10k subscribers as fast as, as I did so I'm very happy for that thank you very much thanks for your support now um, come and check it out patreon you won't be breaking the bank it'll be cool and um, it's the chats man it's just laughing it's the chats so in that uh, on that note I'd like to say peace out to slim pickens to Lemmy to John noise to um, Tough Chunks, like to say Brian, like to say what's up to him, Cubit All Stars, like to say what's up, you know what I mean? Okay, the new guys, Furniture and DJ Adam. Um, I'm going to forget a lot of people as well, you know what I mean? Um, as well, Lockte. Lockte started a new channel, by the way. He's one of the patrons, and I helped him along a little bit. So he's starting his new channel. Go and support him. And then when you're there, just tell him I said hi, all right? Okay, guys, I'll guess, I guess. Guess. I guess I'll see you next week on another video. If not anything else, I'll see you there. And look at you now.